Hello, friends. I'm here with uh, Tim Peace, uh, a good long-term friend, like a couple of decades behind yeah. us now. Yeah. And so Tim is uh, special title teaching minister. Teaching minister. I don't really know what it means, but no. that's what I. I'm assuming you do, do teach then. Some teach some stuff. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First grade math. I'm good at it. Oh man, first grade math. I, I need first grade math. I can times so. anything. Um, I almost can times. Can you time stuff in first grade? I don't even remember. Uh, I, no, but I can't times things now. I and also so, I also went to a Bible college, so I don't know math anyway. So. Did you take any math courses? In no, Bible college? not at all. I did not either. Amazing. Time. So I think eventually they caught up and realized you yeah. need at least one. Yeah. But not the case for me. And so, um, yeah. but uh, so yeah, teaching minister at Mount Carmel Mount Christian Carmel Christian Church. The Mount Carmel Christian Church. Yeah. So why do you use the word the? Uh, just because all the football players. Okay. On in the NFL, like when they're doing their little thing, if it's an right. Ohio State player, they always say the Ohio State University. I think they've done it for other colleges too. I think I, I don't really it. know what the significance of the is. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. But the Mount Carmel Christian Church yeah, makes sense. But, but there is actually no the in front of it. It's just Mount Carmel. If we were flashy, which we're not, yeah. we would like throw up the the whole logo they do when they're introducing themselves. Yeah. So Mount Carmel, what do you what do you love about Mount Carmel? Well, Mount Carmel is the place where I came to faith. Um, um, Russ had a hand in that. Russ was a Russ was a staffer here uh, back before my staff days in a previous life. In a pre previous, I can't talk, previous <laughs> lifetime. And uh, no, I, you know, so the place is home, family to me. Um, but, you know, the, the cool thing for me is that at some point along the way, um, I transitioned from being a kid in the youth group mm -hmm. uh, to, a, um, to a volunteer of many capacities to a staff person, and um, while I still feel loved as the kid here, uh, I I'm also feel respected in yeah. what I bring to the table. And so it's kind of a, I shouldn't say rare, because I haven't had enough experiences anywhere else to know yeah. if it is rare, but it feels like it might be rare uh, to get to kind of grow up in faith in a place and then turn around and, and be able to, uh, pay that forward in the same location. Um, yeah, I, you don't hear this story very often. Where, at what, 16? Somewhere in a ballpark, yeah. Somewhere around 16. Um, uh, to enter into the life of Jesus mm -hmm. and then be within the same faith community for two decades plus. I think yeah. It was. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so what, uh, man, what we do and what you do, like, mm -hmm. So what what is it you actually do as what do teaching you do? minister? Well, um, I do a variety of different things. Some of those are um, are kind of like gift set talent yeah. things. Some of them necessity. Um, all of them I, I hope beneficial to the to the church. Um, mm -hmm. But primarily as a teaching minister here, my responsibility is really to help. Uh, people in the church, uh, both individually, collectively, within groups, um, uh, be able to take whatever each individual's next step of faith is yeah. um, and continue on that, maybe for lack of a better term, growth spectrum. Gotcha. So, um, yeah. and I do that in a variety of different ways. I, I am the off the bench guy for preaching here. Okay. So I have a visibility. But, but but my you're visible right now. But I, I can see you. But yeah. But, <laughs> but uh. But you know, aside from aside from yep. the one day of uh, one day a week that we work. Yep. Um, I know I do. You know, we make sure that that group life uh, not only remains intact and connected for people, but also uh, that they are, um, you know equipped with resources needed gotcha. to make group life have that faith building component. And then small groups, community groups, small groups, discipleship groups. Well, we have, so we have small groups here okay. and then we also have a more grassroots sort of thing that we started up just a couple of years ago mm -hmm. that we call one with three disciple making groups. Okay. They're more intensive, also more temporal um, and kind of have a, um, a short term. 
somewhat short term there there's a multi-pronged phase so like one person will take on three people for a year yeah and then that person will then hopefully release those three to lead a group of their own yeah but that one that took on the original three will continue to coach them for a year yeah and then maybe more of a higher level year of coaching in year three this doesn't preclude if i've used that term correctly here yeah. The, the original lead from taking on a new group. Yep. But our, our whole idea is that the, the mission of making disciples is first and foremost. Yet at the same time, um, if you think about the Great Commission, mm -hmm. Jesus, one of the things he says, it's actually a command language mm -hmm. uh, in, in Greek. I like to be a geek every now and then. Nice. Uh, the, the language there is this, this idea of uh, remember I am with you always. Yeah, yeah. And so if we're really modeling disciple making after the yeah. core disciple maker, Jesus, mm -hmm. then this idea of you're just a cog in this machine that I'm going to train up to go do this thing yeah. isn't what we're going for. Yeah. We're, we're here to make disciples that make disciples. Right. And so we do feel like um, the, the, you, we know we know we've got a real win when someone's turning around and repeating the process, yeah. but we also stay on to be with them to be a guide yeah. in their lives rather than just saying, well, well, thanks for playing. See you. Have fun doing it yourself. Yeah. So that's kind of. Turns out I don't think we've created a machine that can, that can create a relationship right? no, or no, cultivate no. a relationship, yeah. right? So that mechanistic piece. Right. Yep. You know what has stuck with me recently about that same passage mm -hmm. is – Go and make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. uh, baptizing them, maybe yeah. the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then teaching them to obey, mm -hmm. right? Teaching them to put into practice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the light bulb moment and sort of conviction moment for me was I've spent a lot of time trying to uh, uh, help people, inspire people to follow mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. And then even once they're following Jesus, I haven't spent time helping them to actually learn the skills. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. In other words, teaching them to obey, yes. right? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's a super deep and informative task. So what what are your goals, what are your hopes and dreams for them, uh, the, the people that, who are participating in those deep groups, or even just for Mount Carmel? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the hard part about it is, is it's, it's easy as a, as a, as a church that's considered a large church, yep. he used the, the term machine, and mm -hmm. we you know things become, uh, they become a grinder. Yeah. And, and so it, it's sometimes hard to detach from that or get outside of that uh, and to, have, to look at things with fresh eyes. So you kind of, you kind of formulate these goals in your mind of, well, if, you know, start this out with this number of people and then it grows in this and it's easy to turn a process Jesus calls us to be a part of uh, into a uh, really honestly into a holy pyramid scheme okay and uh, yeah and so you know when I when I think about it what I ultimately want is I want to be a church that uh, that helps nudge people uh, to being people that, that bear the fruit of the spirit, mm, yeah. you know? And so if, you know, if you, to me, the number of people that go through this yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't be your primary indicator as to whether or not you're successful. So your metric isn't yeah. how many. Right. People. Now I do. Now I do think that the the how many comes into play because at mm -hmm. at some level you know it's good to know. Right? It's not even about good to know. It's that you. It's kind of like you want to make sure that you are that you're. It's 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 less about the number and it's more about recognizing that, that a number represents real people. Right. So if you're never making strides in that. In that area, it, it's easy to call. Well, you know, I've been stuck with this guy over here for 20 years, and right. uh, he's not very. I'm almost there. I've I've almost uh, I, I've almost got him to learn what love means. I'm just joking. So, like, right. you know, at some level, 
you know, now Jesus had like this immediate thing he had to do, something about a cross or whatever, but without us getting into like f fake numbers and playing guessing games at how long this was and his earthly ministry and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We do know that Jesus was with his 12 and beyond. Yeah. You know, there were more disciples. But he was training those but 12. But he was training those 12, and he did it for a um, a limited number of time. Yeah. And he commissioned them to go do this thing mm -hmm. that he did in them first. Mm -hmm. And we know that they did that. Uh, we know that even, even a guy that wasn't in the 12, a guy that run, ran into Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Paul has disciples. You can read the book of Acts where he yeah. has people that follow Paul. Right. Like, what? He's not, they're not following Jesus. They're following <laughs> Paul. Yeah, they're right. following Paul. I don't know why they would want to, but they did. Right. And so the point being is that the people Jesus commissioned to go do this work yeah. did it. We, we, we have evidence of. Uh, people being affected by those people who then went on and affected other people. And yeah. so on from that standpoint, numbers of people, I don't like even saying numbers. I, it's just feel filthy. It's yeah, like yeah. numbers matter. Yeah. You're just a number with no name in you. No. <laughs> numbers of people matter because yeah. people matter. Yeah. But if we're just churning out numbers of people that go through a process or a program right. that then can – replicate the process or program but there's no bearing of fruit there's no growth um there's no christ-likeness the right. kingdom of heaven isn't coming down right into the world then then we're just replicating numbers of people and that's not yeah. so it's a both and sort of thing my yeah. buddy arlen around here yeah he loves saying you know we're both and people yeah yeah, um, yeah. it really is a both and thing i, I think yeah. when we pit those two is like uh, opposing forces, I think we're missing the mark a little yeah. bit. And well, so. it, it's uh, not surprising to me that following Jesus mm -hmm. works anywhere and everywhere, right? right. 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 <laughs> Whether it's organized or yeah. uh, not quite as organized right. or uh, fluid, oh, yes. like. Uh, and and that's the yeah. and then the beauty of the early church is it is a blend of organized and disorganized. Oh, for sure, there is a blend of. Of, of mass converts and then singular stories of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I, I think that's another thing, like, the, if, if the work is, is hidden the aims that Scripture te teaches us were the aims of Jesus and her, his earliest followers, then we're winning. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter if, if you're, you're winning with, with you discipling one guy yeah. or you happen to be, you know, Billy Graham, if Billy Graham did good stuff, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Each, each person's doing what they're what they're doing, right. and I don't mean that to sound frivolous or or that um, you know that none of that stuff matters, but it, it's it's all good, right? It's, it's all good. So uh, there was that thing that you said mm -hmm. about out of those hopes and dreams is just uh, and I'm going to use some of my own language and what I heard yeah. um, of kind of flooding. <laughs> Flooding uh, your community here with people who are, uh, for whom the fruit of the Spirit are pouring out, right? right? Who are just more loving, more what peaceful. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure I could memorize, I could rip them all off. You know, self-control, patient, yeah. uh, forbearing. I think is uh, is one of the words for patient. everyone's there. favorite one. Everyone wants to be forbearing, yes. and so gentle, kind, mm -hmm. like. Um, and uh, man, just, my heart just resonates with that. Just to imagine how different uh, our communities would be here with you yes. all here on the east, far east mm -hmm. side of Cincinnati. As a west sider, yeah. I refer to it as the far east. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, because for my friends who grew up great on the west side, to get here. for my friends who grew up on the west side, yeah. this, this is West Virginia to them. And so, um, <laughs> but uh, good night, man. We could not be praying and longing for the same thing. Yeah. Uh, in every uh, every little nook and cranny mm -hmm. of uh, of our world, mm -hmm. and then our Cincinnati, we share this little right. region of the world. And uh, so, um, and so excited about what you guys are doing here and who you are, and uh, praying for fruit, man. Yep. Right? So, yep. people uh, nudging people into I forget exactly how you said it. Nudging people. Um, I don't even know what into, I said. Uh, we'll go back and watch yeah, it later. Yeah. So beautiful. All right. Hey, grace and peace, everybody. I don't know how long that was, but.
1502. Yeah. Not bad. Probably should have stopped it sooner. I don't know how well we're going to edit 